So guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be continuing photographing the Iris Nebula in a Cepheus constellation. And hopefully today, we're looking like we're gonna run about 150 to 200 frames. It frames up beautifully on the C11, and I'm really excited about this one. I'll do a little bit of processing, but I did make a little bit of a mistake the other night. I took a load of frames of the Iris Nebula, when I went to stack them, um, it only detected two stars, and my focus was just off, and uh, yeah, it was a little bit frustrating. But you know what, the C11 is not the easiest telescope to focus, that's for sure. I'll show a clip of us rolling off the roof again. We're gonna go into the telescope room, and I'm gonna show you how I set up my night of imaging, how I'm gonna process the Iris Nebula to make sure that it's a good picture for you guys. <laughs> So guys, before we get into this video, I just want to say a massive thank you for everyone that's tuning into the channel. Remember to like, subscribe, and throw a comment down below. So everybody probably wants an update on the C8. Did it actually find focus? Um, well guys, I've got a little clip before we get into the main video. I'm just gonna quickly show you that and show you the results of what we did. Did the coffee fix work? Have a look at this. So there's the moon, and that's what we're going to try and image with the C8 telescope. So guys, there you go. That is the result of one image. That's all it was, it was just one image. There's nothing stacked, there's no clever business going on. It's just one image, just to show you how sharp I could get the focus on it. There's a couple of tweaks that I could have done, but to be honest with you, it, it, you know, the scope wasn't powered on or anything like that. That's just me literally trying to get a quick photograph of it for you guys to show you the end results of the coffee tin fix. So guys, let's get into tonight's video. What we're gonna be doing this evening, is we're gonna be photographing the Iris Nebula. That's in the Cepheus constellation. It's also known as NCG 7023. It's 1,300 light years away from us right now. And we're gonna image it, and we're gonna share this image at the end of the video. And do you tell me in the comments below what you think. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into the telescope room, we're gonna do our checks. So I, every time that I go into the telescope room, I always do checks on the telescope, always make sure that it's gonna be running all right and there's not gonna be any problems. If you don't check what you're doing often enough, at some point you're gonna come unstuck 100%. This is not an easy hobby. It is a bit difficult at times, but it's well worth the rewards. So let's get into the telescope room and I'll show you what I do. All right, so in the telescope room, and one of the first things that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my telescope over to one side. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our cap off the front of the telescope. And we're gonna just have a look at the corrector plate, we're gonna look at the primary mirror, and we're just gonna make sure, all in all, it looks like it should look. Okay, so I can look into the telescope at this point and say, well, yeah, it all looks clean, it all looks perfect. Um, it's very different when you actually put a light into it. So what I always say is get your old uh, handy-dandy torch out and then have a little look. So I can see on the corrector plate, it's kind of a little bit, um, it's not dirty, it's not, it doesn't warrant cleaning at this point. You know, what I'd say, you want to tend to try and leave the correct plate for as long as possible before you really want to be cleaning it. You don't want to be cleaning it all the time. But it looks really good. The mirror looks nice and clean. And that's what I would expect. So we'll stick the cap back on at this point uh, because we've done that check and we're not going to get quite into the imaging just yet. 
I just make sure that my guide scope is exactly the same. So I just get my handy dandy torch again. Have a little look at the lens. Yeah, that all looks good. So that's fine. I could put my cap back on that. And then my star sense. To be honest with you, I don't really worry about the star sense. It will throw up if it's got any issues. So, yeah, I'm not going to worry about that. So with the CGX mount, what I love about it is that you don't have to find your reference points, you know, go back. Whereas with the AVX, you've got two markers. You have one at one section and one at another, and you have to line those up before you can actually do anything with it. Um, you don't have to do that with a CGX. It makes life a lot easier. Um, I'll just have a little quick look at my do heater, make sure all of that looks fine, which it does. All of the cables look nice. They're all in there nice and tight. Um, yeah, so all in all, that looks good. And then I'll just check that, you know, all of my cabling around the side, I've got no snags or anything like that, which there's nothing that's going to indicate that there's going to snag. I do think that on the adjustments that I have for my polar alignment, I'm going to stick a couple of foam sections because there's a couple of areas where wires could actually get into that. I think with cable management at some point, I'm going to have to do something a little bit more where I might do some sort of power supply at the top of the actual, you know, maybe on the actual scope itself so that all of my wires are plugged into that and there's just one wire going to the actual scope itself and at that point what I might even do is mount something on the side of the observatory so the cable is actually going to the telescope from above that could work um, it might not I don't know yet I haven't put too much thought into that let's have a little look around the telescope then shall we Guys, so there you go that's your little tour of the c11 we've got the asi 2600 mc pro on there we've got the asi 120 millimeter mini on there as well and we've got the star sense the do controller and um yeah we're, we're kind of all ready to rock and roll now so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go and jump onto the computer we're going to start opening up the programs the moon's out so let's go and have a little bit of a, a focus on the moon and see what the c11 sees with that Right, I'll see you in a minute. Okay guys, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the CPWI, so that's the telescope mount. Here we go, so we'll bring over the, the app and we're going to connect via USB. So it's going to start trying to connect to all of our bits and pieces. So what I'm going to do is just quickly, I'm going to do, um, let's do our last alignment and begin align. <laughs> And you can see by the other camera what the telescope's doing at this point. So it's just finding its um, home switches. Yeah, so you know the little dashes that you have on the AVX. Like I say, the CGX does it automatically, which is really helpful. So it says, please align one star. Um, now, we're not going to bother aligning a star. But what we are going to do is we're going to have a look at the moon. So at the moment, the moon is over here. Just lost it again. Of course I have. So we're clicking on the moon and we're going to go to the moon. Okay, you see your little green rectangle there. It's going to slow over. We're going to have a little look at the moon. So because I'm in an observatory, it makes it a little bit easier with connecting to these things. Because my telescope isn't you know, unset, set again constantly. 
so it's it's quite helpful okay so what we'll do is we're just going to pull that out of the way for the time being and let's open up our ASI studio and we're just going to go on to deep sky imaging and let's make all this a little bit smaller so you can see and we are going to connect our camera ASI 2600 MC Pro it's a great camera I really do enjoy this camera let's move that out of the way try fill the screen up for you guys so you can see what it does okay so um, we're gonna stick this on a very quick setting just so that we can try and take a picture of the moon all we're doing is we're just gonna have a look, little look at our focus that's all and there we go there is the moon um, we will change that to 0 0.2 and we can have a little look inside uh, if I go on continuous and do capture what we can do is we can fine tune our focus just so that we've got it how we want it to be uh, and then what I do is I'll put my reticle on to the actual moon itself so it does say that I need to slew my controls now I always change this down to a very low amount because I don't know what way to bloody move the thing I, I, I mean I'm, I've been doing this for a while and I still can't get the hang of it. <laughs> one direction does one direction, one direction does another direction, but it doesn't kind of add up in my head, that's for sure. So we're just gonna try and put the moon in the center a little bit more. You know what, it looks okay. So um, we're just gonna put centered. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that reticle back off because it's ugly as hell. And we're gonna stop exposure. And we're just gonna change the gain slightly. So let's do 50 gain and see what images look like then. So here we go, um, and what we're doing is we're just going to have a quick look at see how how sharp our image is to the moon. Uh, I'm going to bring up my autofocus, uh, my focuser, sorry, and I'm just going to change it ever so slightly. And the hope is is that we can either get it sharper or not so sharp. <laughs> I mean, I love looking at the moon close up like this. It is fantastic. So I'm just going to move my focuser in a little bit more and see if that makes it blurrier or sharper. We'll wait for a couple of frames to come through. This part's probably the most boring part of the video for you guys, you know. Um, for me, I just like to take my time and make sure that I've got it as sharp as I possibly can have it, really. Just getting ready for the night of imaging. It just makes, it takes that um, frustration away when I'm going to start actually imaging something that's uh, a little bit more... Um, you know, difficult to focus on. It's amazing looking in the craters like this though, isn't it? I mean, I I love that. Especially, um, I don't know the names of these craters. I wish I knew a little bit more. I, sh I should really do a bit more research. So what I found about the C11 is I have to almost do an over focus to then bring it back into the under focus. And if you go too far, it messes it all up again and I'm not sure if any of you guys have in that same issue I don't know guys what do you think I mean don't get me wrong it's great being able to focus on your computer but just I've had issues with the autofocus or with the you know motor focuses I find that I'm not maybe I'm just impatient I don't know or maybe my expectations are too much I kind of don't want to mess around with it too much now I think that I'm pretty much there You know, and these are some of the issues that I have with, with, like I say, with the astrophotography side of things. You know, finding my targets. I've been using Stellarium, and I'm not, uh, I'm not very familiar with the program. I do like how it sort of represents, you know, the the night sky in, you know, in the field view that it has, and you can fast forward and and what have you through that. You know, are my expectations too much? You know, throw it down in the comments. You let me know. You know, would you be happy with that? And there you go, so that's that's how I've set up my, my camera and my focus. Let's go into PhD2 and I'll just show you putting my guide scope on. Okay, so I've just taken off my old um, lens caps. Right, so now what I can do is let's go into guide, connect equipment. So if you click onto this little button here, you've got your ASI 120mm mini. Um, and I'm just gonna connect all of that and what you do, you press this little green button down the bottom here 
and that's going to start ex doing an exposure uh, in the sky or start looping the camera. It's a bit too bright out there still, I think, for the camera. All right, so there you go, guys. Um, at that point, what I'll do is I then go on to imaging the, the Iris Nebula. Yeah, there we go. So so that's how I focus everything anyway. I go into Stellarium. I choose my targets from Stellarium, and that's how I, I get, you know, um, whatever targets I'm going to pick. So I know this part was a, a, was a long bit of it. Um, I'm just going to start slewing over to targets and stuff now. Uh, you'll see the results, and... I'll, I'll ping them uh, right at the end of the video. Cheers guys, I'll catch up with you shortly.